In the last video, we showed you how to baste and sew each one of the panels together. Now we're going to show you how to do the patch assemblies, and there are two options to use grommets or to use webbing and rings. Your instructions will say which. We're going to first start with a video showing how to use grommets. Depending on your sail size, you may be able to use spur grommets. Our instructions will indicate which one to use. If you're going to be using webbing and D-rings, then you need to skip ahead to the third video. That will show you how to do the corner assemblies for that assembly. We'll take three of the Dacron patches that are included with this spinnaker kit, you may have more, and we'll apply a Super Spray 77 from 3M to each one of these assemblies. This is an awesome way to baste patch assemblies together without having to worry about wrinkles. If you don't have a 3M Super 77, you can use double-sided tape or seam stick, which was used in uh, basting the seams together, but it's not as easy. You can see here, Deb takes that larger patch and puts it on top of that nylon patch. This is an Adacron patch assembly. Then she'll take the next size up, which is a medium size patch, and baste it to that larger patch. Then, after this one's adhered, she'll take the smallest of the patches and place it on top. There'll be three layers of Dacron in this assembly and one layer of the ripstop nylon on top to match the spinnaker. If your kit, when you order it, requires webbing and rings, don't follow this process. You'll be doing it a completely different way. You notice if there are deviations or wrinkles in the fabric, you can always peel it up again and reapply it. You'll do that for all three corner assemblies. Here we go. There's one corner. And the next. And the head. When you are basting and sewing these panels together at the corners, you'll notice that they were a little bit offset. Don't worry about it. Trim it off. Here we're trimming it off before we've actually basted this panel to the corner or sewing it. But we really recommend that you baste it with a Super 77 spray adhesive or use double-sided tape and then sew it and then trim off the excess. Notice this spray box that uh, Sayerite has created for its loft. This spray box is just cardboard along all three of the sides to keep the glue from spreading all over your building, your house, or your loft. And then apply that patch to the corner, being careful to keep out any wrinkles in it. The patch will never lay exactly flat because there is actually some shape built into the sail, so don't worry about it if there are small wrinkles in it, but be as diligent as possible here to keep all wrinkles out. You can always pull off the patch, and reapply it if there are major wrinkles in it. You'll be doing this to all three of the corner patches. You notice here she's peeling it up because there's a few wrinkles in there. You want to inspect both sides, this side and the underside, and uh, make sure that it's as flat as possible. Peel it up if you've noticed some heavy wrinkles and reapply it again. Take your time here. The longer you take and the more careful you are, the more beautiful your patch assembly will be. Now she's going to take a light here because we have to sew along each one of these patch edges. Taking a light and holding it up to the light and then marking it with a pencil or with a chalk can help in, in guiding you when you're sewing these patch assemblies together. And here we are using the Sailrite Professional Long Arm Sewing Machine. This is a 20 and a half inch long arm and we're using a three step or four point uh, zigzag stitch. You can do it with a single zigzag here at the corner patches. And here we've sewn one, two, three, and finally the fourth patch assembly. Again, if you don't have a three step, don't worry about it. Just use a standard zigzag one row on each one of those edges. Then we trim off any excess material and there's what your patch assembly looks like. You'll do that to all three corners. You'll notice in this video that the patch is not right along the edge. It's a little bit offset in. Don't worry about that. The stay tape will cover that up. This will not cause your sail to be any weaker. There's still good strength in this corner patch assembly, so don't worry about it. Now that the patches are done, we'll turn our attention to the stay tapes. So there'll be three different colors. Create a crease in the center of the stay tape by uh, just applying pressure on the edge of a sharp table. That's the best and fastest way to crease this stay tape. And then apply double-sided tape to the inside edge. For a quick way to apply the double-sided tape, take a awl and pound it into the table, only if it's a table you don't care about or floor you don't care about, and then just simply pull the, the double-sided tape tight and uh, run your 
fingers across it. This is a quick way to apply double-sided tape. You'll want to do this to both edges, not just that one edge. Uh, it's, it's important to get this stay tape on correctly, and we always recommend that you use double-sided tape to baste it in place. Now, we peeled off the paper backing. We didn't show that on this one side, but you can see the glue here, and then we carefully apply it to the correct side. As you know, there's a green or blue and red and the white stay tape. Okay, then peel off the paper on the other side once you've gone down the whole length of the sail and, and fold it over so that it sandwiches the edge nicely. Now we don't typically use a three-step or four-point machine to sew the stay tapes in place. Uh, we're going to use just a zigzag machine here. This is again the professional 20 and a half inch long arm. The ultra feeds work great for putting uh, spinnakers together, so don't hesitate to use an ultra feed with the V30 thread and there's what it looks like. Just a single zigzag down the length of each one of these stay tapes. Once you're done, just trim off the excess. We always leave a little bit over, hanging over the edge. And then just apply your next two stay tape colors along the foot and along the opposite edge. Now a good idea when placing grommets in this is to actually sew on uh, some leather for shafe protection. If your sewing machine balks at this, if you, this is the Sarite 111 sewing machine, then you may want to uh, uh, do it by hand with just a needle uh, and wax twine. But uh, if you have an altar feed, you should be fine. Okay, then trim away the excess to make it look nice and neat. And then we'll concentrate on putting in the grommet. Now this is not a spur grommet, this is a Ruckinson ring. And unfortunately the Ruckinson ring die sets cost a lot, so we don't usually supply Ruckinson rings. Usually we supply for larger sales, we'll supply webbing and D-rings. And we're going to show you that in the next section of this video, how to do it, uh, do each one of these corner patch assemblies using uh, webbing and a D-ring. And here's the die set for the Ruckinson ring. We're just going to walk you through this because this is very similar to how a spur grommet would be installed. These Ruckinson rings take a lot of uh, uh, force to get set. So you see the teeth there that were in that video it means that we didn't have it set appropriately. So she's going to actually tilt the die set a little bit to get those teeth to sink into the sail. And there we go. It's all set, ready to go. Looks great. Okay, that's it. You are now done with your spinnaker kit. It's that easy. Uh, this is a beautiful sail, great shape in it. It'll look gorgeous when it's flowing on the sailboat. Building a spinnaker from sail right is quite easy.